Hello, my name is Andy Owen. I'm Subject Officer for GCSE Geography, WJC EDUCAS. This presentation will introduce the main requirements of the fieldwork components in EDUCAS's GCSE Geography qualifications. We'll look at ways in which fieldwork can be organised to create quality fieldwork experience for learners without having to reinvent the fieldwork inquiry every year. I'll also try to answer some questions that I'm frequently asked. This slide shows the uh, pages on which you'll find the critical information in each of the specifications. Component 3 is common across both specifications, so it doesn't really matter which specification you pick up as long as you've got the right page number in front of you. Learners should experience working in contrasting environments outside of the classroom and outside of the school grounds. They need to have the opportunity to explore both physical and human processes and the interaction between them during their fieldwork experiences, although these requirements need not be addressed in each piece of fieldwork. Learners also need to have the opportunity to collect both primary data and physical data from the environment. You do have to offer two fieldwork inquiries, but you don't necessarily have to offer these on two separate days. You could offer one day of fieldwork in which the focus of the inquiry is physical processes in the morning, and human process in the afternoon, or two separate days of field work with a gap between them, or a residential field trip of two or more days. However, WJC does recommend the second or third route through. Two days of field work or a residential field trip will provide opportunities for evaluation of the inquiry process. Lessons learned in the first field work inquiry can be applied to the second inquiry. A single day, however, would not allow time for students to reflect on their experiences and amend their plans before starting the next quarry in the afternoon. By setting common approaches to fieldwork in each cycle, WJC will be able to set assessments that are meaningful and relevant to all candidates in the cohort. Schools will continue to set fieldwork inquiries in different contexts, some choosing rivers fieldwork for their physical context, while others set an inquiry in a coastal context or set within an ecosystem. It won't matter. The questions in the first cycle of examinations will be about the use of transects and the concept of spheres of influence. The questions will not be about rivers, coasts or ecosystems. In this slide you can see the cycle for the first three years. In the rest of this presentation we'll look at how you might plan over a three-year cycle. Quality fieldwork experiences can take a lot of preparation, and finding new, safe, accessible sites can be an issue. So, one way to approach the two fieldwork inquiries is to decide that you'll cover each of the methodological approaches in one fieldwork inquiry that you'll use every year. You might decide, for example, to collect physical data by repeating the same river inquiry every year, making an effort to focus more attention on the required methodological approach in the correct cycle. If you take this approach, then only one field trip is planned, and the other field trip, set in a human environment, will focus on the conceptual approach. Alternatively, you might decide to repeat the same fieldwork inquiry into an aspect of human geography each year, using this fieldwork inquiry to tick off each of the methodological approaches. You should then need to design an inquiry in a contrasting environment to meet the required conceptual framework in each cycle. In an ideal world, each inquiry would focus on both the methodological and conceptual approach, giving students the opportunity to have two goes at using transects and getting their heads around the concept of spheres of influence in both contrasting environments. This will obviously take a little more planning, but in order to minimise workload, you should be able to continue to use the same two contrasting environments in each cycle. This at least will cut down on risk assessment and logistical planning. So in this slide and the two that follow, we can see how the same two locations could be used in each cycle. On this slide, in the year that spheres of influence is the conceptual approach, you can see that an urban environment and coastal environment could be used. In the following cycle, 2019, the conceptual approach needs to be mitigating risk. Again, you could use the same urban environment and same coastal environment to create inquiries about this concept. And in 2020, the conceptual approach must be sustainable communities. Again, you could use the same urban environment and the same coastal environment for your conceptual fieldwork. 
While visiting a coastline or river environment is desirable, WJC appreciates that the cost of travel can be prohibitive. And for schools in large urban areas such as London, the prospect of working anywhere other than in a human environment seems difficult. But physical data can be collected in an urban environment, especially if you focus on one of the physical environments, such as urban parks, that exist within it. Churchyards, for example, often contain an especially rich biodiversity, as pesticides and insecticides are not usually used. This slide shows various types of data that you could collect in an urban environment. Some teachers have indicated that they will get students to write up a full report after each inquiry. However, you may decide that this is not necessary. The assessment is through an examination rather than moderation of a report. However, students will need something to revise from. Perhaps they should keep a portfolio of notes instead, with notes on each of the six stages of the inquiry process. For example, in the first cycle, focusing on the strengths and limitations of using transects, and drawing conclusions about spheres of influence and whether their inquiry matched the typical patterns they might have expected based on their wider understanding of this concept. The first stage of the inquiry process is about preparation and posing questions, and it is important that students are involved in this part of the inquiry. There are a number of ways you could do this. For example, through introducing students to the location they are about to visit, through an online map or satellite image, perhaps using Google Street View. You might also want to create opportunities for students to be involved in planning and preparation by posing questions and making predictions based on the images that they've seen. As mentioned before, you're not allowed to use the school grounds for the actual piece of field work, but you can use the school grounds to rehearse data collection. So, for example, you could use it in the first cycle to uh, learn how to set out a transect and sample along it. Remember that this is not controlled assessment, so there are no longer controls over time or supervision. This means you should be able to gain some curriculum time compared to controlled assessment, and it's quite possible to use homework, for example, for data processing and practicing presentation techniques. We have prepared other videos about the methodological approaches and concepts for fieldwork and please take time to have a look at those videos. However, if you have specific questions, please feel free to contact me on this email address. Thank you for watching this video.